the goal of your persuasion speech is in seven to nine minutes, you have to influence your audience's opinions, thoughts, beliefs, or actions regarding a particular topic that we are facing, a, a problem that we're facing that's impacting us globally, so across the world, that's impacting us nationally here in the United States, that's impacting us locally here in Illinois or the Chicagoland area, or a problem that's affecting us institutionally, so something about Harper that you don't necessarily agree with. So what this really means is you're going to have to be giving, you read about a couple of different organizational patterns for your persuasion speech. Um, the number one problem that students face in this speech is they end up giving like a three reasons why speech, like here's why Coke is better than Pepsi and here's the three reasons why I believe. Don't do that. That is technically persuasion, you know, trying to influence or convince someone that something is better than another thing. That's not the name of the game. What you have to do for this speech is come up with a problem, cause, solution speech. So here's this problem that we're facing, and main point one is going to identify the problem. It's going to show the negative effects of that. How is it impacting us? How is it hurting us? Then you'll transition into main point two, which will explain the causes. So in my opinion, here are the two reasons why we are experiencing this problem. This is the first cause, and this is the second cause. And then finally, after you transition into main point three, you'll then examine two potential solutions. And you have to remember that your solutions have to be practical, they've got to be desirable, they've got to be achievable and enjoyable. If your audience can't physically make these changes, then that's not something desirable or achievable. So you have to give us solutions that we can actually do, particularly in the comfort of our own home, especially right now during the social distancing stuff. So um, your solutions should attack your causes and your causes should then uproot the problem. So if my problem is recycling and my causes are, we just don't really know how to recycle because it's so confusing, maybe one of my solutions is to make recycling easier. So instead of relying on a number system at the bottom of something that's plastic, there's like a number and that number identifies how like biodegradable that plastic is, which then tells you how you should recycle it, but if you don't know that, you have to like look it up. So one of my solutions might be to make that educational process a little bit more widespread or easier to understand. So the problems have to solve the causes, which then once are solved, uproots, or excuse me, the solutions have to attack the causes, which then uproot the problem. So make sure that you're giving a speech that is seven to nine minutes, that main point one is the problem and effects, Main point two are two causes that are creating that problem. And main point three are two solutions that you can use to solve that problem. For this speech in particular, you need a minimum of five recently published and credible sources. These sources should pass your crap test. Remember that when we identify recent, we're talking about 2017 till now. But if you're using statistics, it really should be last year or this year, because remember that statistics change all the time. So if you're saying that like 80% of people in the United States suffer from breast cancer, and you're citing something that was surveyed in 2016, that's really, really old, right? We need a statistic to be recent. So your statistics should be really, really recent. One of your sources needs to be in your intro when you establish significance. And one of your five sources has to be found from an academic or scholarly peer-reviewed article. That means you're going to want to find this source on Google Scholar or Harper's Library Database. You can actually create a one-on-one -on -one, like session with a librarian if you go to the Harper Library's website and they can help you look for things with the, with the Harper databases. So if you need help trying to figure that out, let me know. But if you go to their website and you just click like research appointment, you should be able to do that. So 
For those of you that were having a hard time with Google Scholar for the last speech or just didn't do that as part of the evidence assignment, you have to include an academic or scholarly source for your persuasion speech. And that works really well in your introduction when you're establishing your source's significance. So get the most credible, the most reliable source early on. Same as your informative speech, you can use five regular size index card front and back. You don't want to write your entire speech on them. You want to leave it bullet points, extemporaneously prepared. Um, and then you'll have to show your note cards at the end of your speech, five seconds on one side, flip it over, five seconds on the other side, that kind of stuff. So make sure that you review this prohibited topic list because you want to not give a speech that's located on this list. So I tried to include topics that either A, I'm just over listening to because I've been doing this for a long time and I can't hear the same speech over and over and over again, or B, topics that don't necessarily have a lot of new information on here. So make sure that you review these prohibited topics. Can't do a speech about art programs in schools being cut. You can't do a speech about assisted suicide or death with dignity. You can't do a speech about how we should restrict dog breeds, like my apartment doesn't allow pit bulls and that sucks. You can't do a speech about the tuition of college. You can't do a speech about abortion. You can't do a speech about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So just make sure that you look over this restricted or prohibited persuasive topic list before you claim your topic. Because if you do do a speech that's listed on here, I'll try to catch it and let you know. But that would be bad news for you. So that's really all I have to say about the persuasion speech. Really make sure that you do the reading, make sure that you watch the lecture, make sure that you do the assignments. But um, watching the persuasion speeches below, I think will really, really help. So please, please, please work ahead if you need to and start thinking about questions you'll have for your persuasion speech so I can answer them in a timely fashion. Um, for those of you that aren't going to have any questions and you feel pretty comfortable with it, it has been a pleasure being your teacher. I know it was abnormal times and everything was online and that's not how you wanted to do it, but hopefully you learned a lot. I'm sorry if I made you watch a lot of videos. I used to do a lot of like lectures and talks and stuff, and I got a lot of feedback from students that they really didn't like that, that they thought that it was boring. So I tried to do a lot more like TED Talks and YouTube videos and interactive assignments. So uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you have any suggestions for me to improve the class, go ahead and shoot me an email. But go ahead and buckle down for these last two weeks and you'll be all set. So that's all I've got. If you got any questions, let me know. And good luck with your persuasion speech.